Well, good evening. It's later than I normally like to do these videos, um, but I am excited to do episode four with you for Pathways to His Promises. So we're going to call this one episode four, and then I do have this listed as the pathway to the healing of restoration. Okay, so we're going to call this Pathway to Restoration. Okay. So looking at this information, it's been a long week. <laughs> We've been going through a lot. As you can tell, I'm sitting on my bathroom floor. My kids are asleep. Um, and I finally was able to wind everything down to where we can come today and we can actually get this video where I said on Fridays. Okay. Um, so it's been a busy, busy work week. Last week we were away um, at GMC, um, kind of did like a little staycation with the family, um, and then back to work full swing this week. So it's been kind of a little bit chaotic this week, trying to, you know, get back into routine after vacation mindset. Um, so that being said, um, the video is going to be posted a little bit later and I do apologize about that, but I do want to dive straight in, um, since it is later. Um, in the day um, on the pathway to restoration. So um, just to begin, um, I wanted to go over, and again, my notebook, my faithful notebook is gonna help me stay focused. Um, I think my coffee has fully wore off. So <laughs> we are running on the Lord and my notebook tonight. So that being said, I wanted to talk to you about restoration. That being said, I got thinking about Pastor Carpenter's message. He just recently preached it and he was talking about the process. Okay, and he did a way better job than I'm gonna do today. Um, but he talked about a process that we're going through and it got my wheels going about thinking about restoration and it got me thinking about, you know, um, that aspect of things and processes. So that's really life in general, right? It's just one big giant process, right? We're all just going, you know, from from being born, it's a process of newborn stage, and then we go into crawling, walking, um, and then all the way up to our teenage years, that's a process. <laughs> and then we, you know, we become young women and we get married and we settle down and some have kids, some don't, some don't even get married, you know, just some of our lives are different. It's all just one big process, right? So today I want to focus on the process of restoration. Okay. So what is restoration exactly? Right? So I, I was like, hey Siri, what's restoration? So when I was researching what restoration is, it said that restoration is an action to return something to a former condition, person, or place. Okay? So that's exactly what God wants to do with you and me. He wants to restore us back to him because in the beginning we know the order of creation Adam and Eve were placed in the garden and when Eve bit the fruit and then as Adam bit the fruit they were removed and kicked out of the garden and as goes you know the story all the way up to where we are today God wants to really restore us back to him okay so that's the main goal is to make it to full restoration to him which we fully won't be until we make it to heaven right so we're going to focus on what we can restore while we're here on the earth and i want to be the first to admit okay i'm a real person i'm not perfect by any means as you can tell i'm sitting on my bathroom floor late at night trying to record a little lady's devotion okay um but i'll be the first to admit that the process of restoration isn't fun not pretty it's not glamorous there's no filter to make it look more appealing there's no um, you know it's not something that you want to go through it's not something that anybody's like oh pick me I want to go you know put me through you know the process you know nobody is volunteering it and nobody certainly wants to get out on their Instagram page or their Facebook page and put a you know selfie saying hashtag going through the process restoration right so nobody nobody enjoys it okay so i'll be you know i'll be that one that does admit that and now that's because he wants to be restored to us 
okay? Now, to have something restored, you have to have first something lost, right? I can't, I can't restore to you something I borrowed if I never borrowed it, right? Um, and that's the same thing in this. So we have to lose it first before it can be restored back to us. Okay, so follow me this. Think of it this way. Um, I heard a guy, it was a video, and he was talking about how um, a gold ring is certain 14 carats and how did it get that way? It has to go through, you know, this extensive burning process. And so I got curious. I was like, okay, well, um, for gold to become more pure, it has to be fired up, right? It has to be set through the fire to be able to have those impurities removed, right? So um, I was curious, I was like, well, I wonder what the temperature is. I wonder, you know, when you have those people that put the gold through the fire and they're, they're getting those impurities off, what is that temperature? So again, me and my, my little quirky ways, I was just like, okay, well, you know, I wonder how much that is. I researched it and gold is heated to guess what the temperature is. I was thinking mm, maybe 100, 200, maybe 300, maybe 400 degrees. The temperature for gold to be heated to get those impurities out is 1,948 degrees Fahrenheit to its melting point. What? 1,948 degrees to purify gold. That is a lot. Okay, now whatever is left over after that so what happens is the gold goes through the fire and all of those impurities so what happens they boil it um gold sinks the impurities rise to the top okay so what they do is they remove the impurities you're left with just a big old whatever carrot gold whatever ring um thing that you have left so all that junk is boiled off they scrape it they're left with gold okay so it's just like one old big hunk of rock. If you think about it this way, originally they just mine the gold out of the ground, you're left with this big rock, and then they melt it down, get off all those impurities, and then we're left with, you know, that pure gold. So the other junk that we have in us, right? So we have to think about that, right? So we kind of are like that big old piece of rock or that clay or that or the earth, you know, that God made us from. And he's going to put us through fire and he's going to put us through tests and trials and he's going to put us through processes to get all of that yuck off of us, right? Okay, so let me give you a personal example, okay? This may be a little, um, <laughs> I wish I could say this was years ago, um, but I'm just going to be transparent, okay? That's just, that's just who I am. So I'm going to give you a personal example. Okay, and I wish I could say this is like last year and I'm like this perfect woman, like living for God and I'm now this shiny rock, right, of gold. Well, no. Okay, no. This example was actually just last week. Okay, so I'm pulling. Okay. Um, last week, I just said, you know, we got back from GNC, so we're excited. It just so happened. Okay, everything perfect. You know, my husband and I were able to, I was able to take my last week of maternity to leave, um, take that LOA to go to GMC. His work schedule worked out. Um, we had, you know, just enough finances to be able to go. Our hotel was only seven minutes away from the conference center, which was, you know, a happen to chance coincidence um, that worked out perfectly. Obviously, we had all the snacks, we had the floaties, we had the kids, we're going to the pool, we're going to have this great time. It was going to be so much fun. So it was going to be perfect, or so I thought. So they gave us an email. We even booked this in advance, okay? So my husband, he gets on booking.com. He gets a good coupon. We get a good deal. Um, he does the reservations. Reservations say, okay, they say 4 o'clock. They say you can check in your room at four. So we're like, okay, we are going to go. We're going to have fun in the pool um, until this time. And so me being who I am, and I am a cheapskate, okay, I'm just going to preface this. I'm that woman that goes to conference in our hotel with a crock pot. Okay, so picture this <laughs> in y'all's mind, okay. 
um we get done in the pool we're like okay it's almost four o'clock we gotta get the kids out of the pool conference starts at seven i got my crock pot i gotta get to my room we gotta get showered we gotta get everybody out of pool mentality and transition to church um and i gotta warm up i gotta plug my crock pot in we gotta eat we're gonna have dinner we gotta be able to do this thing and mind you i have a family of five with an almost six month old a seven year old and a four year old and two adults that need to get ready for church okay so not saying that as an excuse but just to kind of give you perspective okay so we were all trying to get ready for church and we get there you know it's like right before four so we'd go to to try to check in right the email said four so we're thinking okay we'll be there for four we'll have plenty of time it'll be great it'll be perfect it's perfect everything's fine perfect it's gonna be great woohoo gmc we're gonna be spiritual and be all great yeah well that's not what happened <laughs> if i'm honest okay that's not what happened it's not it turned out our room wasn't ready and let me tell you my normal, you know, I'm patient. I try, you know, I work in customer service. I'm patient with my customers. Um, okay, so, you know, this normal patient woman that's supposed to be going to, you know, this conference to bring glory to God, you know, just, oh, right? <laughs> it's set on fire. Okay, this was a test from the Lord. I know it was, I failed, mm, gone, didn't do it right. Okay, so I'm just gonna be the first to admit, okay? So God was testing me to see how truly shiny this little gold rock of a nugget of a human being really was, okay? So let's just say I did have a little private, I wasn't rude, I'm just gonna preface this, I wasn't mean, I didn't, I wasn't like, let me talk to your marriage, I wasn't pulling a Karen, okay? I had a little private temper tantrum. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just, just, it is what it is. I had a private temper tantrum and i nicely was asking if there was other accommodations i explained to them you know we were told four o'clock um and to see you know if there was something you know that that could be done maybe there's another room or you know i don't even care um if it doesn't have a double bed we'll figure it out if it's got a couch the kids can sleep on the couch you know i i at this point i don't even care if our room was sufficient enough space at this point i was just like we need to get ready we gotta eat we gotta get ready right so let's just to say that did not happen they did not accommodate there was nothing and i'm not complaining um but there was no success there okay it wasn't ready and then finally it was okay we had to wait over um an hour and a half and mind you we were in the lobby with our little bellhop full of our things my crock pots need to be plugged in my baby's crying my kids are starving we're tired and we're determined to go to conference so all that to say this really honestly um you don't know that you're impatient until you're forced to wait you don't know that you're stubborn as a mule until you have to learn how to compromise. And honestly, you don't know that you are an angry person or struggle with anger until someone makes you mad. That's just is what it is. You don't know these things until you're poked <coughs> to your wit's end, right? You don't know who you really are until you go through those things. And really another example is you really don't know if your heart is dirty until it's clean, okay? So I'm, I'm so thankful. I want to get into the word. So there was my personal example. Hopefully y'all are, you know, so fix my tiara here. You know, I'm not, or not my tiara, my, my halo is what I meant to say. You know, I'm not, not a perfect person and I know I'm not going to be perfect until the day that I make it to glory. Um, and that's just how God wants us to be because we depend on him. So I'm getting into the word. I want to dive in to 1 Corinthians. If you can go there with me, I'm getting my word. Okay, my pen is stuck. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse 5. Chapter 1. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. If you get there, say amen. Okay, so it says that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. 
So we all are a work in progress. We all are just trying to make it. We all are trying to get there and we are enriched by him. We know that he is teaching us. We know that he is shaping us and we know that we're all just a work in progress, right? So another way that I like to look at restoration is through a lens of a pampering point of view, okay? You're like, what? What? Going and having your cool loss and being impatient, that's pampering? Well, honestly, I wanted to bring it in this point. I mean, you're saying you gotta be burned to 1,948 degrees Fahrenheit. That's fun to you, that's, that's exciting. Um, and that's pampering. Well, honestly, I want to put it this way in this, in that aspect of a pedicure. Okay. Us ladies, I know me, that is, I love them. I don't get them often. I do it once in a great while, but when I do, it's a me time. I consider it me time. That is my self care. That is my girl's day. That is my spa retreat pampering. Um, and if you've ever had a pam a petty, petty pampering day, that's what I was going to say, a petty pampering day, you know, you know, it is, it is that time that you can step away. So how does that align into today's devotion as far as restoration? You're talking about gold being boiled. You're talking about being impatient. You're talking about how crazy you are. <laughs> how does a pedicure relate to restoration? Well, let me dive in here. A pedicure is actually when someone gets paid pretty good money to pretty much, I'm just going to say it how it is, that you get paid really good money to pretty much just scrape off all of our dead calloused skin off of our feet, moisturize, and then boom, you got a pampering experience. <laughs> I mean, that just is what it is, right? You pay this money, you go soak your feet, you scrape your skin, you massage, and you're good, right? That's what a pedicure is. So if we can just dive into this analogy a little bit deeper, um, I promise you, I promise you it's going to be good. So just stay with me. This mom is tired. It's been a long week. I know this is going to be a good word if you can just hold on for the ride with me. So the first step in getting a pedicure is soaking, right? You just go in, you put your feet in the water, you hear the water running and it's just, mm, it's that self-care. You're just like, oh relax right they don't just start diving in right they don't just start getting that big old scraper scraping your skin they don't start clipping your nails and massaging and get the oils and get you out of there right that, that's not how it goes they start with the very first step there's a process there's an order to things there's a way that things have to be done in the right order for the pedicure to become successful, right? You don't just go in and they don't take this big old cheese grater and start shaving your feet without soaking them first. You would end up limping out of there like, what in the world? Like you'd be bleeding, gushing blood all over. You'd have like this big old massive bandage on your foot and you'd be like, mm, I'm not gonna go do that again. And I can certainly tell you, nobody would ever pay for a pedicure again, right? They would never go back. And to be honest, nobody would even consider that to be pampering me. I don't care if it was away from the kids. Um, 20 minutes, it would be torture. Okay, so I'm just being real. There is a process and there's a step. And that's how God is with us, right? There's a certain process and there's a certain order of things. Um, and soaking for a pedicure is the first step. Now, Another way that I look at this is have you ever had a stain stuck in a pretty fabric that you've had to just soak overnight? You know, you get the OxyClean, you get, you know, the mixture just right, you soak it in and you pray all night long before you fall asleep if it's something super special to you and you hope the stain comes out, so you soak it. So that's kind of what God does to us, right? Sometimes it's what feels like we're just in some lukewarm watery trial that seems pointless i mean you're just sitting here in lukewarm water it doesn't seem like it's going to do anything it doesn't really seem like it's coming or not you're not in the fire you're not being burned you're not being tested and seeing if you're patient or not like i was at the hotel you're just in this lukewarm state right um and sometimes life gives us things that feel like that we're just sitting in lukewarm water 
and doing absolutely nothing. I don't know about you, but I've felt like that before. There's been times, you know, there's nothing really bad happening, right? There's no, there's nothing like, you know, tragic happening in my life. Um, but there's not even, you know, an overflowing river of abundance of blessings happening either, right? So it's just kind of that plain old mundane day-to-day -day life of that soaking season. So when I say that, it's in all actuality, it's God soaking us in the season wherein we could just take off those calluses. We have to be first soaked before they can scrape off all that stuff, right? We have to soak into that before all that yuck can come off. And that has to be brought to the surface. That skin has to be softened before they can then do the next step in the order of the process. But if they did it backwards, I mean, we already went over that, right? We, if we did it backwards, it wouldn't fully work. I mean, you could sit there and take a big old scraper to your foot all you want, right? Even if you did want to do it that way without soaking, which I do not recommend. But if you did do it that way, it wouldn't fully work. You wouldn't fully get the deep tissue of the calloused, yucky skin that you want to get off. It would just work barely, if at all, any. You'd end up limping and bleeding, like we already said. If it's not soaked first, it's gotta be soaked first. That's the first step, soak. Okay, soak that in with me. Soak it in to your soul, soak it in, okay? We have to soak first, okay? God is not taking you through this soaking to punish. He's not doing it to punish us. He's not trying to humiliate or condemn you. He's just trying to soften you. Okay? Trials and processes weren't made to make us bleed or suffer. They weren't there to help, you know, push us to become bitter. They, the trials and the processes weren't there to make us become unforgiving saints. They weren't there to make us feel inadequate or less than. They were there to refine us. And I can speak from experience that process, it is, it, it does refine us and it does reveal who we truly are during those moments and during those things, you know, you think you got it right and then you fall on your face <laughs> in the middle of a hotel room. You're like, ah, I want my more body. Okay. So that's just real life. Okay. So now we're left with what? I mean, besides wet feet. Okay. We're not just left with wet feet. They don't, you just say, mm, soak your feet, bye. That's not how a pedicure works, right? They're not, you're not just left with wet feet. Um, and sometimes we're left with sore feet. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There's been some pedicures. I mean, I'm just gonna be carnal for a minute, right? There's been times I've gone to a pedicure and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, they are rubbing this cheese grater on my foot fiercely. They must have had a rough day and they are like, you know, and I'm like, ooh, oh. So, it's, you know, sometimes your feet are wet and then, you know, maybe they're wet and sore. But they don't just leave you, okay? <laughs> Sorry, that's just, that's just Chris and thoughts, okay? Um, but that just might be me. I don't know. Maybe I'll never have that experience, but I have, okay? I'll be the first to admit. But afterwards, <laughs> sorry for that rabbit trail. Um, after all that, after they soak your feet and they take that big old cheese grater, that's what I think of, um, to your feet, you're left with what? New skin. You're left with new, fresh and new. And um, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5, verse 17. And that tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new after all that dead stuff is removed they don't stop there they continue to moisturize and massage and then it becomes more like that pampering feel that us ladies like we like to be pampered so that's when it starts to become pampering and it it is quite pampering I mean it is them you know taking that massaging oil and they're getting it in um, you know and maybe maybe this video is just a hint that it is uh, it is due season 
for my husband to spoil me with a pedicure. <laughs> uh, maybe I need one. I don't know. I do need one. But anyways, for real though, they don't just leave you hanging. They take that oil. Okay, what we talked about last episode, they talked about that healing balm of Gilead. So they took that oil and they massage it and they work it into your skin. And they cause the oils to penetrate and massage and deepen the level of skin that is to be treated. Okay, restoration works that same way. Okay, God first lets us go through processes, which sometimes might be fiery. Okay, sometimes it might be that 1,900 and whatever degrees Fahrenheit that we got to be boiled. But sometimes it, it can be that season of softening, that so, to soften us. And that will be allowing us to th have those things that should be removed out of us that are there the whole time. Okay, it's not, it's not like... You know, I went into that hotel room in my first day and I'm, I've, you know, I've been this perfect patient person. And it's been there. It's been there. It's been there that I've been stubborn. It's been there. And it's there to make us pure. Is it fun? Absolutely not. Do I enjoy it? No. Mm -mm, not really. I don't like it. And you learn more, honestly, if you could just lean into this, you really do learn who you really, really are. And that's deep. I want you to get this. You really learn who you really are because you may be the shiny rock, right? But there's fool's gold, okay? There's fool's gold for a reason and they don't just call it that just to call it that. There is an imitation, okay? And I don't want to be the imitation. I don't want that for my life. And I know you don't want that for yours either. And I know that, you know, it's not fun or enjoyable, but you do learn who you are through these stages of refinement. And if I'm being honest, my first taste of refinement, I was like, mm, ouch, that's hot. I don't want to be in this. I don't want to do this. And then learning from experience, um, I'm just going to be honest. I, I stepped away. I was like, I knew God was refining me. I felt that word spoken into my mind, refinement and I didn't like it. I was like, mm -mm, get me out of here. No, too hot. And, but I have learned through experience and, you know, circumstances that if I would allow those trials that I go through to actually teach me, mold me and shape me, instead of moaning and groaning and complaining, and it does, it does go a whole lot better. Okay. And just an FYI, Running away from refinement or restoration processes is not the answer either. Okay, I've tried it. <laughs> I've tried it. You can't run. There is no running. Okay, there's no running. Jonah tried it and look what happened to him. He got swallowed by a big fish and I don't want to be eating my own big fish. Okay, um, it don't work. I'm just being honest. You know, running from your circumstances does not help whatsoever. And you got to think of it like a teacher who gives you a test. If you don't pass the test the first time, you have to retake it over and over and over and over and over and over, okay, until you pass the test. And those tests will look different. Um, but if you ask yourself, truly, why am I always being tested on this specific one area? Why am I always struggling with the same thing? Well, we have to reevaluate and see where we can improve the next time, right? We have to sit there and see, okay, if I'm doing this over and over again, maybe there's something that I keep doing over and over again wrong that I need to do right. So there's just that little nugget. I don't know about you, but I want to do it right the first time. Okay, I want to lean in when God is trying to soften me. I want to remember the mistakes I've made and have God help me, okay? And just know God God isn't trying to humiliate you. He's not trying to make you feel less than. He is a gentleman and he is going to give you opportunity after opportunity. Okay, that's the kind of God he is. He will. He is patient. He's kind. He's loving. Um, First John four and eight if we can go there really quickly first john chapter four verse number eight it says he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love god is loving and we know the love is you know patient and kind and all of these things so god is love he is all of those things and you know what when we do make a mistake we learn we do learn better on what we can do better next time and i just 
I want to leave this on a high note. I want to encourage you that you can give it one more go. Just give it one more try. You may feel like you're in that, you know, cycle of doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, but give it one more go. Get up, pick yourself up. I mean, we just sang that song at church. A saint is truly just a sinner who fell down, but then got back up. We're not perfect. We're not sitting here on some pedestal thinking I'm better than you. No, no, that's, that's, mm -mm, that's backwards. We are not. We have fallen down and we will keep falling and we're going to keep getting back up. Okay. So if you're in the fire, ask God, ask God to bring forth those impurities and make you stronger. I want to go really um, to, let's see, it's 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. So if you want to get 1 Peter, we're going to just flip over there really quickly. 1 Peter chapter 4 and then 12 right here. Okay, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So if you're on the fire, don't think it's strange. Don't think it's weird. God has it ordained for a purpose. And if you're in that soaking season instead, soak. Just soak. Just sit in deeper. Linger. Okay? Linger in that soaking season because it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper into you. And therefore, God is able to get deeper and work on you even more. So just wait on God. And then with that scripture, I wanted to go to Psalms chapter 104 and verse 27. So chapter in Psalms 104 verse 27 says, These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. So in the marinating process, in the waiting, soaking, mundane, day-to-day, -day, feels like nothing's coming or going, season, if you wait, if you wait, your meat is coming, your provisions are coming, the scraping season is coming, okay, so be ready, be prepared for that, okay, be be open and honest with yourself and God, and he will take those things. So refinement does bring forth that restoration, okay? So this was a fun study to do. Um, now, this wasn't an extensive, you know, mind-blowing, in-depth study. I know we didn't really, you know, dive in really, really deep and chew on something um, that'll, you know, sit with us for a really long time, but that is all I have for today. Okay, so just if you're in that fire trial, you know, hold on tight. You know, it's not something strange happening. And if you're in that soaking season, just soak a little bit. Okay, God has got you. He is taking you deeper. And know that he loves us. He is there helping us be blessed. Have a great weekend. Um, let me know what your thoughts are, okay, about this devotional. Just leave them in the comment section. If you haven't already, just like this video for me. Um, I would like to get this out to more people. I'm actually thinking I would like to share a little in secret with y'all. Um, I'm actually thinking about making this into, maybe I should say it. Um, I, will. I will. Okay, ready? Drum roll. I won't leave you in suspense. A podcast. Okay, I'm thinking about taking these videos and make it into a podcast as well. So if you like podcasts and you prefer podcasts over YouTube videos, and we've gotten past the YouTube stage of life and we're not all podcasts, you know, listening, um, audio, audio, blah, 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 I'm tired. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking about doing podcasts. So um, let me know what you think about this video. Comment, share, like with your friends. It's been a pleasure, you know, doing this video. Thank you so much for all of the comments, likes, and support of all the ladies that I've had come up to me. Your support means the world to me. I'm, I'm just glad that this could be a blessing to you. And I pray that you have a fantastic week. Thank you so much.